So, hey, Rob, before we get started, I'd like to have some sad news. Uh, Wayne Dunham died yesterday, and I think also his wife died within a few hours. His wife had been quite ill with cancer. Uh, but Wayne was someone that everybody loved. He was county commissioner for several years on the Berkeley County Water Board for 21, 22 years. Just someone that when you were around him, you felt good. He just he was a wonderful, wonderful man. I have the pleasure of interviewing yeah. Wayne uh, many times when he was on the Berkeley County Commission back in the 90s. Uh, always had a smile on his face. I, I was going to say, always yeah. a smile on his face. And he and I did um, the celebrity, I've talked about this before, the celebrity um, goat milking. Yes, um, at, the, at the youth fair. Yeah, at the yeah. youth fair. Yeah. And he, of course, was, was, was a skilled a yeah. professional. Yeah. So... Um, he, had, so he had goat milk and forearms. He did indeed. <laughs> he, had good he did yeah. indeed. He, also, he was also quite a basketball player at one time. Yes, he was. You want to tell the story? <laughs> Way, Wayne played for Gib Miller. Yeah. Right? So uh, Gib, of course, longtime basketball coach at Hedgesville High School. And uh, so Wayne was on the team. You know, Wayne was not tall. No, he was not. <laughs> okay. So, but he was tough. So, so Gib was telling the story one day, and Gib's no longer with us either, but Gib was telling the story one day about how there was a kid on the other team who was just killing them offensively. And, and Wayne was a good defender. So, so Gib sent him into the game and said, Wayne, I need you to take this other guy out of the game. Right? You got to, you got to knock him around some, you got to foul him. You got five fouls to give, give them all, but you got to take this kid out of the game. Well, Wayne apparently misunderstood the instruction. <laughs> Wayne goes in the game. Next thing you know, boom, psh, down goes the guy. And the rest blowing the whistle. A, a fight starts on the court, and Wayne gets kicked out of the game. Wayne comes over and says, Wayne, Gibbs says, Wayne, what would you do? He said, you said take him out, so I took him out. <laughs> That's yeah. not what I meant. <laughs> Wayne also loved telling that story about himself. <laughs> he did. He did. So Some people are just very literal, That's and you right. have to be careful when you give them instruction. Correct. I have someone in my family who will yeah. remain nameless yeah. who... Um, who would do that? I so. asked Wayne about that the next time I had him on. He yeah. said, well, the coach said to do it, so I did it. <laughs> so you did it. But he'll be missed. He's a, he's a great man. So. A, a wonderful, uh, wonderful human being, and we will miss him. Our uh, condolences to yeah. the Dunham family yeah. and uh, all relatives uh, there. It's uh, just a wonderful part of yeah. our community. We'll miss both Wayne and his wife. Uh, our first guest in this segment is Rob Burton. He's the president of West Virginia American Water. Rob, good morning. Thanks for coming into the studio today. Yeah, very glad to be here today, Rob. And uh, I can definitely attest to uh, being called Ron more than once in my life. So, <laughs> so you're with me on I, that I one. I feel your pain there. <laughs> yeah, well, is yours caused by the fact that your phone won't recognize your own name, though? Uh, my phone usually does recognize me. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just the people that I know sometimes don't... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, forget what to call me, I guess, or, or they make up names, maybe. Well, that's what my phone does for me. I tell, hi, this is Rob. Next thing I look down, it's Ron. Who it sent says Ron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, kind of a funny little side story. Um, lived my whole married life, which is almost forty years now. That um, my last name spelled S E N, Lauren Sen, um, is invariably spelled S O N. Yes. And um, and my husband, who's been a circuit judge for twelve years now. Um, was at a conference, and he sent me a picture of his um, his nameplate that was spelled S O N, okay. and it's okay. But he had a little copy editor's um, um, carrot on the O and made it an E. <laughs> Wanted to show it to me because in my life I was a copy editor and editor, and so he thought that was. Um, kind of fun and and i thought it was funny too so if you're a anyway. judge your name should be spelled correctly amen you don't want to offend a judge yeah well, yeah, yeah anyway rob tell us about west virginia american water and the recent acquisition that you folks made no i appreciate that yeah west virginia american water is uh, the largest uh, private water uh, provider um, here in west virginia uh, we serve on a daily basis right at a third of the population, almost 600,000 uh, population served across the state. Uh, we are originally based out of Charleston, West Virginia, but really excited to be here in the Panhandle. And uh, now with the acquisition of uh, Jefferson Utilities uh, from Lee Snyder and his companies, mm -hmm. uh, we're very excited to be here in the Panhandle and serving customers here in uh, Jefferson, parts of Berkeley, a small part, and a small part of Morgan County as well. You'll have an open house tonight for people to come and ask questions? Yeah, really excited about that. We're going to have an open house at the T.A. Lowry Elementary School there in Shenandoah Junction. And uh, we're going to have um, a number of professionals there to talk with folks about anything from customer service and billing uh, to just other things about 
the company that we're doing uh, for both engineering capital work and ongoing operations, water quality, mm -hmm. things of that nature. I'll be there as well. Uh, but it'll be a chance for folks to meet our team, uh, talk about what's going on. And that'll be from 5 to 7 p.m. this evening. You mentioned Berkeley County. Uh, what parts of Berkeley County will be affected by this, too? Uh, just a couple of small subdivisions uh, uh, spilling over into Berkeley County. Actually, I don't remember the name of them right now, but uh, um, and then a small subdivision over in Morgan, but mainly in Jefferson County at this point. But we are looking forward to working with folks throughout the panhandle. Will customers notice any changes? Yeah, so the immediate change that folks will notice, and they already have, uh, we completed the acquisition the first week of October. Uh, so they've already received their first billing that's labeled uh, West Virginia American Water Company. Uh, that's the most immediate thing that folks see is that, you know, where the bill comes from, where they pay it is different. Uh, the information for that is, um, you know, on those first bills. Uh, the second thing that folks will notice, you know, here with West Virginia American Water is, you know, Jefferson Utilities has been very aggressive in, in the expansion of their systems and serving new customers, but also upgrading facilities, and we're going to be doing the same. Bill? Yeah. Uh, how many customers do you have in Berkeley County? In, excuse me, Jefferson County, Rob. So uh, total customers, both on the water and wastewater yeah. side, is almost 4,000. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, whenever we signed on the uh, the deal a little over a year ago, it had to go through a regulatory process that took almost a year to close. Mm -hmm. um, the utility was about 3,700 customers. Uh, by the time we closed it, it was uh, just a shade under 4,000. Uh, and in the one month since we closed, we all add, actually added 60 new customers okay. uh, to the system. Yeah. So it's a very growing system here in Jefferson County. Will there be any rate change between what they what you had under uh, Lee Schneider and what you have now? Yeah, the rates are changing and be transitioning to our full tariff rate, which okay. uh, the way that works for utilities, we, we charge one single tariff across the entire state. Mm -hmm. That's set by the Public Service Commission. Uh, and those rates will be uh, phased in because there will be a slight increase for customers, but I'll be phased in over a two to three year period. Uh, and, and folks will see a small increase uh, with their first bill that they get from us here starting in October and November. Uh, and then going forward, there'll be some increases to the full amount. Uh, average customer for West Virginia American Water across the state uh, pays a bill of around $66, $67 a month. Okay. And that's for how many water? Uh, how many gallons? Is that 4,000, 4,500? Our average customer uses right at 3,000 gallons. 3,000 gallons. Yeah, okay. so if you have a larger home and use a little more, that, that average bill could be a little higher. So around $66 uh, dollars per average, average customer. And what was it before? Do you have any idea? Uh, it actually ranged. There was actually uh, uh, five different utilities that were part of the okay. acquisition, yeah. so it ranged a little bit. Uh, but for most customers, when they go, go to full rate, it'll be an increase of anywhere from 15 to 25 to $30 per sure. customer okay. per month. Now, you mentioned upgrade. Uh, I was with the Berkeley County Water District mm -hmm. for several years, and one of the big problems was replacing the distribution lines. Uh, and uh, the, the lines, especially the old pipes, tend to uh, deteriorate and uh, degrade quite rapidly. How much upgrade will you have to do throughout the, the network, throughout the district? Yes, that's a great question. You're absolutely right. I mean, across the state, you know, aging infrastructure is a big deal for all utilities, and especially in the water and wastewater sector. Uh, so we are actually planning to spend almost $3 million before the end of the year on work in the system. That includes, um, you know, some work at some facilities, some treatment facilities, and also some work in the system. Over the next five years, we're intending to invest a little over $20 million in the system. And that's both uh, on existing pipes, you know, upgrading them maybe to a larger uh, main or a newer main, and then also for expansion of the system and upgrades at our treatment facilities. So we're making substantial investment uh, here in the panhandle there. Where is the, what's the principal source of your water, Ron? Uh, so uh, all of our water sources are well water sources. Okay. There's multiple sources, mm -hmm. uh, but all of our sources at this point are on wells. You draw nothing from the river. We do not draw from, from either Potomac yeah. or the Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. Maria. Hey. Talk a little bit about the process. Um, I think that people may not understand just how um, extensive that is, because the PSC obviously mm -hmm. is heavily involved. And, you know, I remember... Lee Snyder talking about it this for years really um, so um, so what what goes into the sale of um, of a, a place like Jefferson Utilities to become West Virginia American Water so that's a great question we was actually talking about this the other day it's an interesting process so uh, we started having uh, you know very meaningful negotiations with Lee about a system about two years ago actually uh, and then over the course of about 
you know, eight to nine months, we came to terms on uh, the acquisition of the utilities from Lee and his companies. And then we had to file that with the Public Service Commission, which governs water and wastewater utilities across the state. They have to approve uh, acquisitions and sales and things of that nature. Uh, so it was filed with the commission, actually, uh, the summer of 22. Uh, a little over a, a year ago, and then it goes through a process with the commission where they, they hold hearings, they, they uh, receive testimony, uh, they allow folks to give input, public input, they have public input hearings, and then they take all the information from the parties and make a decision on one, whether or not uh, they should approve the transaction and whether or not it's in the best interest of customers, and then they uh, uh, then approve what are the terms of that transaction, uh, so the amount that, that, that can be paid for utility, whether the utility can be sold or not. And then they also set the rate structure uh, as, as part of that acquisition as well, what the rates will be for customers. Uh, so it's a, it's a fairly lengthy process. It's a very important process that, uh, you know, that, you know, it's, you know, twofold is for protection of customers. And it's also to make sure that companies are able to be uh, able to, you know, go forward and do the things they should do to serve their customers. Uh, and then once that was approved, then it went through a process of just, you know, arranging for the actual sure. closing of the utilities, which we did on October 2nd. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, you, do you serve customers outside of West Virginia? Uh, so West Virginia American Water uh, mainly serves in West Virginia. We have a small section down in the southeast part of the state, uh, in the town of Bluefield, West Virginia, where we serve over the state line into Bluefield, Bluefield Virginia. Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, but we are a state affiliate for, for a national company, American Water is our mm -hmm. corporate company. And through uh, American Water Corporate and our state affiliates, we actually serve uh, customers in uh, 17 states for our regulated business. And then we also have a part of our business, uh, which we call our non-regulated, our market-based, uh, where we partner with the Department of Defense and, and serve on military installations at 17 facilities across the country. And then we have a, small, a few small contracts uh, that are straight with municipalities uh, in a couple of other states. So we serve in, in a little over 30 states across the entire country. And is your headquarters going to be at the location where Jefferson Utilities was? Um, and I don't know that many people go and right. say they pay their bills there at the, but some might. So yeah. So uh, you know the, the the offices there where Jefferson uh -huh. Utilities was at, we actually uh, will not be accepting payments there. Okay. Uh, we have multiple uh, <coughs> excuse me payment locations in the area where we do accept payments. Uh, which include National City Bank, Walmart, and Weiss Market. Uh, plus, you can uh, call our 800 number, uh, which I can provide that information as well. Our 800 number is 1-800-685-8660. And you can also go on to uh, amwater, amwater.com, slash mywater, uh, mywater, and then you can sign up to pay your bill online as well and, and do a range of services there. Uh, but we are going to be uh, op opening a specific operations center. Sorry about that. <laughs> I just knocked your mic over. Doing a great job here, right? <laughs> You're fine. I'm, I'm not the best Rob here on the radio this morning, yeah. so that, 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 that is definitive. And, and Bill already called you Ron once today, so we're, <laughs> we're off, off and running here. Rob Burton is our guest. He's the president of West Virginia American Water. And uh, is this your first presence in the eastern panhandle with this acquisition, Rob? It is, yes. Yes, it is. And, and again, to, um, uh, to further your, your question, yeah, we'll be opening up a specific operation center gotcha. near Kearney's, Kearneysville. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know where the, uh, I believe it's called the Black Dog Coffee uh, mm -hmm. facility is, we'll be right near there. Everybody actually. knows where so, Black Dog is in Kearneysville. Oh, it's really good coffee. <laughs> Coffee, actually yeah, so <laughs> sure is yeah. but, um, but yeah this is our first time here in the panhandle of, of the state our closest operations to here is actually a four county area around the west end area there mm -hmm. uh, off i-79 and some other counties in that area so we're very excited to be here are you actively negotiating any other uh deals in the eastern panhandle uh we're always talking to folks the way we look at it is it, 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 part of our job is provide solutions to the state again we feel like we have an obligation to the state of west virginia as the largest water water provider here and that can range from anything from mutual aid agreements uh, to agreements to provide uh, water on an ongoing basis through our wholesale agreement or through an emergency basis and then obviously we do talk to folks if they have a need and are interested and talk about potentially an acquisition uh, which do occur as well obviously with, with what we did here in Jefferson County uh, but we, we work with municipalities on a range of issues and provide a range of expertise and opportunities there so you know that was a very long non-answer to your question <laughs> Uh, I've, learned, I've spent a lot of time over my career with politicians, so I've learned to talk without really saying a lot sometimes. Sure. Uh, but yeah, we're at, we are actively talking to some folks. There's nothing at the stage that I can disclose at this point, uh, but we're always willing to have those conversations. And again, we can provide a range of potential solutions. Some of our some of our 
uh, listeners are saying that there was a movement in Berkeley County without getting into some of the politics of that, that the Berkeley County folks were looking, but then decided not to um, contract with West Virginia American Water. Can you speak to that or do you not want to speak to that? Or Yeah, so, I mean, we've had some conversations with some folks in Berkeley County and mm-hmm. some folks in various counties and various municipalities. We always have those conversations. As far as, you know, a, a potential deal with the county or not, uh, there, there's no stage that where we've, we've okay. gotten to that kind of level of conversation. Uh, but again, we're always wanting to have conversations with anyone on potential, potential solutions we may provide. Uh, but no, there, there's, there's nothing, you know, at this point that's... Uh, you know, on the table or anything of that nature. We're just having conversations and building relationships. Going back to Jefferson County, and I applaud you for having an open house tonight, uh, which is always a great way to get to know and work with the community. But uh, after this uh, acquisition, have you heard any specific comments from the customers in Jefferson County? Yeah, I mean, we, we get asked, you know, the you know the normal questions of you know you know you know how, how, how much how are my I, rates going? How, how much are my rates? You know, how <laughs> how do I pay my bill? Where do I pay my bill? Uh, questions such as you know, what are you bringing to the table? You know, why is this helpful mm-hmm. for us? Uh, and, and again, we you know we understand it, it's a large transition for folks, uh, but for us, this is what we do on a daily basis. You know, we have over 330 professionals across the state that every day deliver drinking water and wastewater services. And again, the biggest thing that we can provide is uh, again our ongoing plan for improvement of infrastructure, for, for expansion when, when, when needed for new economic, economic development. But we also bring expertise to the table. Again, we can tap into those over 300 you know, professionals across the state. And then across our American Water footprint, we have over 7,000 employees. Uh, you know, so we can bring to bear a lot of resources, a lot of expertise, uh, a lot of capital. That's a big issue as well. You talk about aging infrastructure. You know, in this state right now for water and, and wastewater, there's over a $10 billion need. $10 billion need in infrastructure in the state. And, and there's only so much public money available. So the way I look at it and I tell people, it, it's got to be an all the above approach to solving the, you know, the state's water and wastewater needs. And we are a potential solution, part of the solution, uh, by bringing you know, private equity and capital yeah. to the table. And I always tell folks, it can't just be us and it can't just be the state and it can't just be the federal government. We got to work together on these solutions. Is American Water privately owned or is it public? Uh, so American Water is is publicly traded mm-hmm. uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, AWK is our, our stock. If you're interested, okay. uh, but but <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, American Water itself is, okay. is is a publicly traded company, and West Virginia American Water is a wholly owned subsidiary of American Water. Sure. And I assume there will be a individual or individuals uh, in Jefferson County full time. And if they are, who that who will that person be? Absolutely, our local operations manager is Stephanie Real. Uh, she, she also served in a similar capacity for Jefferson Utilities, okay. uh, but we will actually end up having a total of uh, almost 20 employees mm-hmm. here in Jefferson County as of right now, uh, working out of our operations center there in Kearneysville. Rob Burton, our guest here, president of West Virginia American Water, recently made an acquisition in Jefferson County and now have a presence in the eastern panhandle. And uh, a couple questions regarding the process for rate increases. Rob, how do you determine... Uh, when you need a rate increase, how much it's going to be, and then, of course, we know you have to go through the PSC to get permission, and there's got to be a public hearing in that process. But uh, from the financial aspect of it, how do you understand uh, the formula for that? Yeah, so the majority of, of any rate increase we go to is based upon the investments we made in systems. Um, you know, a, a portion of it also deals with operations costs, mainly in, in, you know, for the last few years anyway, to deal with inflationary you know, increases in pressure. Uh, but when our, our company and our analysts determine a need uh, f- for a, you know a change in rates based on those investments, uh, then we have to follow what's called a, a rate case with the Public uh, you know, Service Commission. And then again, that goes through, a, it's actually a 300-day process. Uh, and then the Public Service Commission goes th- through that with testimony from us, information from us. Uh, their own staff produces testimony. The consumer advocate in the state uh, produces testimony and analysis as well. And then every you know citizen is allowed to give input to that, uh, either through you know writing letters, sending emails, and can actually uh, choose to give testimony in the case as well if they would like. And sometimes that occurs. Uh, and then there's a process that's gone through uh, with the commission that ends up in uh, public hearings and, and public uh, testimony about that. And then the commission makes a decision uh, on what rates will be set at to move forward. Uh, Is they, follow, I'm sorry, go ahead, Rob. When you do a rate increase, as you have a presence in many different counties in West Virginia, are you looking specifically at that county to justify the rates 
justify the expenditure in that county, or is it getting spread throughout all of the West Virginia American water locations? That's a great question. So the way that we operate in, in actually all of our states is under a single tariff format. Uh, so here in West Virginia, uh, all of our customers are under that single tariff. So uh, they're all under that same rate structure. Again, uh, with the ac- ac- acquisition here, rates will be phased in over time, uh, but eventually all customers will be on the same rate statewide for both water and wastewater services. So that way, if you've got got a smaller utility that has a giant expenditure the people in that area don't get nailed with a gigantic rate increase it gets spread throughout your properties yeah absolutely as i was mentioning over the next five years we're going to be investing close to 20 million dollars uh, here in the jefferson county area and you're talking four thousand customers uh, that's a heavy burden for just those customers but we can spread those costs across our entire 170,000 customer uh, account customer account uh, territory, uh, which lessens the cost for all customers. And the same occurs in other areas as we make investments in various locations. Uh, where it gets really d- difficult for some utilities that are even smaller, you know, four or 500 customers, and they may have a five, 10, $15 million, million dollar need. Uh, and that can be very burdensome on rates, uh, but we're able to spread those costs through our single tariff. And do you have a relief program for folks who maybe you lost your job, medical illness or whatever, I can't afford to pay my bill, I'm already behind. Is there a way to help those folks? Yeah, absolutely. We offer a range of services, everything from a budget billing, uh, we offer uh, you know, installment payments if someone gets behind on a bill. Uh, there's programs through which you can receive grants uh, to pay back bills if you've gotten behind, either directly through a program that we offer uh, through Dollar Energy or through the DHHR, which offers a 20% discount program for those who qualify uh, based on being on different types of assistance with the state and so forth. And something we've also filed with the commission is a new low-income tariff that we're proposing to the Public Service Commission to enact, which will provide discounts of between uh, 10 and 60 percent on a customer's bill uh, based on their income as compared to the federal poverty level. Uh, so we're really trying to, to find ways to help customers, especially those in most need, uh, those on fixed incomes, low incomes, mm-hmm. uh, to, to, to lower their income and lo- I'm sorry to lower their bill cost. Uh, and if the, the new low income tariff is approved, actually, uh, those who are basically earning um, 50% or less of the federal poverty level uh, could see their average monthly bill drop to $10 a month. Rob, uh, looking statewide uh, and anticipating your cost, uh, will the cost be focused uh, for water source development, for treatment, or for distribution, or fairly evenly across the board? So a uh, great question. Uh, I'll give you uh, uh, the easy answer, which is yes. Uh, so, so, so truthfully, the, the biggest issues when it comes to uh, cost of, of, of upgrades, cost of capital at this point, is around the aging infrastructure and new regulations. Sure. Now, that's where the two biggest buckets of capital investment is needed, and that's true for any utility in the state. Uh, as, as you know, those you know, assets get older, they have to be replaced over time, and the new regulations are always coming into play, which require new treatment techniques and things of that nature. And the third area is for economic development and growth, which, which is uh, very good for the state economy and the local economies, uh, but has a cost as well. Sure. Do you, um, are, are the majority of your customers private individuals? Do you have businesses in that mix as well? Yes, or? So, yes absolutely. So across our entire footprint of 170,000 mm-hmm. plus customer accounts, uh, around thirteen or 14,000 of those are either commercial or industrial mm-hmm. customers. How about in Jefferson County? Uh, I don't have the exact numbers in Jefferson uh-huh. County, but of the 400, the majority are residential, but there are a number of commercial okay. and industrial entities as well. Okay. Rob, uh, before we run out of time, the open house uh, tonight, again, the details about that. Yeah, absolutely. Again, the open house this evening there is at the T.A. Lowry Elementary School there at uh, 103 Shenandoah Junction Road in Shenandoah Junction uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. We'd love to have everyone who wants to to come out. Uh, there'll be some light refreshments. It won't be a meal, but we'll have some, some, some drinks and some things to munch on there and a chance to spend a couple hours with our team, and we'll answer any questions anybody has. Rob, thanks for coming in today. Thank you very much, Ron. Rob, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe you made a new open. There you go. Well, and welcome to the Eastern Pan Hour, Rob. Thank you so much. Glad to be here.